Good morning, young people. This Fandangled new Hardcore League has come out, and since its release, you might have noticed I actually haven't uploaded a new build video, and that's because I've been playing it a ton, but before I can get to a point where I feel really comfortable about the way that my character is performing, I end up just dying. Just dying to something. Whether it's lag, or lag, or the fact that I died to strength damage in the shadow tombs. Well, you know what? It's okay. I've decided that instead of just like waiting until I can confirm that my character is good or bad, just telling you about my experiences, because at the end of the day, I think that sometimes it's also okay to explore the things that aren't always going to be the best or may not be the most successful, and also look at the challenges that you might face when playing a different character. Because while I can sit here and say, oh yeah, here's a great build and this is going to get you to succeed, I kind of already wrote a different build guide that I know is going to succeed. If you haven't seen it, I got my hardcore build guide season two, and all of those builds pretty much from other people have told me that they've been having a good time and that they've gotten level 20 and achieved their goals. Since I'm just throwing my face at the wall with random garbage, I figured why not just share my experiences and my struggles so that maybe you can learn something along with me about what the real challenges are in DDO and how to overcome them depending on your character type. And so to start off with challenges, we're going to be starting off with the Spellsinger Bard. Now Spellsinger Bard is a really interesting character class because it's both parts healer and buffer and DPSer. There's also a little bit of crowd control thrown in with the ability to cast sound bursts as well as mass hold, auto's irresistible dance, dancing sphere, hypnotism. You know, you've got a whole bunch of different spells in your arsenal. The character that I'm playing is mostly gonna be focused around DPS and crowd control while having some minor buffing in the back end. The buffs I'm gonna be providing aren't the real full buff bard buffs like all the crazy extra hit chance, the extra movement speed and things like that. Instead, it's gonna be getting a little bit of damage reduction, a little bit of attack chance, and then mostly the spell buffs. This character has been working really well in the party because when I do get myself caught into a situation where I need to fight a bunch of monsters, Maximize Shout does a fantastic job of instantly removing all of the dangers from right in front of me. But at the same time, this character is really fun to play because I also get to fill a support role. Once I have a full group, I can go in, fight some monsters, but then also hang back, heal some people, and make sure everyone's got their buffs on. It's been a good experience to be able to kind of adjust to the way that other people are playing. My first few characters that I played in the league were Alchemist, Bear Druid, and Fire Sorcerer, and all of those characters are very, very forward. The Alch Alchemist runs into the room and kills everything in one hit with multi-vial. The bear druid wants to go in and control the entire fight, so your first one in with your bear charge, intimidating and knocking everything down, as well as stunning them. And the fire sorcerer is just blowing up rooms with a single spell and moving on to the next one. Whereas this character is a little bit more forgiving when it comes to how I'm supposed to interact with the rest of the party. If I notice that I have a bunch of strong melee in my party, then maybe I'll just focus on hasting them and keeping up with the buzz saws as they run through the quest, chopping everything to pieces. Or maybe if I notice I have certain spell casters, I might give them the leeway instead of actually using my more powerful spells to deal damage I'll use the lower powered spells like Sonic Blast to hold monsters in place to allow my allies to land their fireballs or other type of dangerous spells This character has proved to be a lot of fun. It works really well solo through elite difficulty It just takes me a little bit of time and once I'm able to get the top tier of the spell singer tree This character will have the ability to regenerate its own spell points and will basically be able to do any content in the game As long as you have enough patience. I haven't really had any close calls with this bard yet so far, unlike some of the other characters that I had, because this character just happens to be reasonably defensive and able to just kind of fall back. Now, the downside of going with the Spellsinger Bard is that I'm not actually going to be able to get Meteor Armor or some of the very potent effects out of Swashbuckler, like the additional movement speed or the extra dodge chance, because my points are really going to be split very tightly. I'm planning on spending a bunch of points in the Typhling Scoundrel Tree because, well, you get a very cool darkness effect that is going to be very defensive when you need to stand still, especially during boss fights. And the Typhling Scoundrel comes equipped with the fiendish arpeggio this spell that they get automatically that allows them to just hit monsters for a ton of fire and sonic damage over time that can be empowered and quickened and maximized making it a very hard hitting spell but on top of that once you get 10 points deep into the typhling scoundrel tree you're able to get the ability to turn monsters to stone. And this turn to stone effect doesn't just work on regular monsters, it also works on incorporeal targets for some reason. So reapers are now subject to a turn to stone effect. Now there is a DC on it, however, it's based on your perform skill, which is essentially gonna be so high that you never really need to actually worry about missing on a target. So once this character actually gets through some of the higher end content, I'll have tons of very strong crowd control effects like the fiendish arpeggio, which does a crazy amount of damage, as well as really strong crowd control, having the soundburst 
first option, and later I do plan on taking Mass Hold Monster, although it is a really, really expensive thing to take in the enhancement tree, so we'll have to see exactly how that goes. I'm not sure if I want to take it right away, or if I might take it later. It is really powerful, but it also costs a ton of mana, and it's six points to max out, which I think is a problem. And this really brings me to the whole reason as to why exactly it's an issue to play as the Spellsinger Bard. I think that the Spellsinger is really cool, but it's just too expensive. There's a lot of things in the tree that kind of, you figure out exactly where you want to spell, spend your points and how much extra stats you want to get from each individual effect without really worrying too much before you get to 30 points or that tier 5. You know where you're going to go with your spell singer and you know which points you want to take based on the type of character that you're playing. But once you get to the tier 5, you run into the problem where the tier 5 costs 16 points to take everything. Now granted, you're not going to take everything. The Song of Capering isn't really that great, so that means it's only 14 points. So if you really want to play a good spell singer, 45 points is effectively the minimum you can actually spend in this tree. And that's really not very good. Um, you really want to get everything, but when you're saying you're going to spend 45 points in one of your trees, that really starts to limit how much you can spend in your racial tree or how much you can spend in your other enhancement trees. This isn't to say that you shouldn't be allowed to spend more points than that, but when you compare something like Spellsinger, which costs 16 points for its tier 5s, versus something like Kensai Fighter, which costs 5 points for its tier 5, it's very, very different. Now I'm going to show you how I built this character so that if you want to try out playing your own Spellsinger bard to be kind of like a pseudo support healer type character, you'll have the opportunity to do that and play along. So here we have it, the Tifling Scoundrel Spell Singer Bard as prepared by me, Strimtom. So meet Taylor Swift. Uh, Taylor Swift is my spell, Tifling Scoundrel, and uh, this character is designed to help the my allies by buffing them as well as dealing damage and doing a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, yeah, the character's not the tankiest. Uh, you know, I don't have the most physical resistance rating, magic resistance rating for sure, or saves or hit points. But a lot of that stuff is going to change, especially as we get more levels, as well as when we get more different types of abilities and buffs. As this character being a bard does get a lot of different buffs. So since I'm a spell singer, I started out by maxing charisma. Charisma is kind of like the most important stat for your character. Now you're going to notice my charisma is only 25. I actually don't have a charisma item yet, uh, even though I'm level 9, I haven't found one. So I'm just kind of using Eagle Splendor once. So this character gets up to 29 charisma and soon to have a little bit more, hopefully when I get some items that will help me out. Other than that, constitution is really important, prevents you from dying, and it's really good. I got a little bit of intelligence so I could get some skill points, and then strength just to make it up. The rest, so that way I could go to town or go to do quests and not worry about my backpacks filling up and slowing down my character, and on top of that for dealing with shadows. So that's important. Um, as far as my skills went, I maxed out these six right here. So Balance, Bluff, Diplomacy, Haggle, Perform, and Use Magic Device with one point in Tumble, giving me the ability to actually tumble. The reason why one point in Tumble matters is because as a bard, you get to increase your skills uh, or the skills of yourself and also your allies by a huge amount. In fact, I'm going to be adding plus 10 to all skills. So if Tumble was unavailable, uh, I wouldn't even be able to use this at all unless I put one point into it. So we have one point put in Tumble, taken out a Bluff, and then uh, the rest of this is as shown here. Of course, Perform is very good because it works uh, basically buffing your Sonic Spell damage as well as working off a lot of your Bard effects with Balance, Bluff and Diplomacy being useful just either for getting rid of aggro or for negotiating with NPCs during quests, and the Use Magic Device kind of explains itself. Also, you got to have Haggle because uh, gold is hard to come by in the Hardcore League. Now for feats, uh, my first two feats were Maximize and Quicken, because this is a spellcaster and you get a lot of spell-like abilities. So you want to make sure you're taking Maximize and Quicken right away. After that, so that was level 1 and 3, and then I took some spell casting feats. I took Evocation Focus and Greater Evocation Focus, because that's just better for my character. I cast pretty much exclusively Evocation spells. I'm kind of... Now, not really working on the enchantment spells as of yet, although I will probably focus on enchantment spells later as I get further into my character. And then we have one of the racial feats, which is this one, the Fiendish Arpeggio. So enchant your fiddle to cast the spell, dealing a d6 fire damage plus 1 fire damage per 2 cash levels, and a d6 sonic damage plus 1 sonic damage per 2 cash levels, and the damage repeats itself every 2 seconds. Also gives you a little bit of mana, so in the event that you are playing as a Typhling Scoundrel and you decide to change your class so you don't have any mana, like you're playing as a pure fighter Typhling Scoundrel, you can still use Fiendish Arpeggio, because this does cost spell points, which is kind of neat. Now, this ability doesn't look impressive on itself, but right now it hits for about 160 every two seconds on my character because you can maximize and empower this effect, which is crazy. That's so much extra stance, and it makes it really, really useful when you're trying to, like, burn monsters down. That also means if there's something scary, you can just hit a boss with it and then just run straight away and the monster will die as it comes to you. It's like Mouse Acid Arrow on steroids, and it's really powerful. And even if a monster is immune to fire damage, the sonic damage still just gets there, which is really nice. 
Now for spells, these are kind of the spells that I decided to go with. Um, I didn't actually take Cure Serious in this list. All these spells are pretty good. You don't really need to swap out too many. I would get rid of Cure Light Wounds, and I'm probably going to get rid of Cure Moderate Wounds eventually, because for now, I'm just using Wands. Uh, this character gets access to Wand and Scroll Mastery very easily, and with enough Use Magic Device, or even just because you're a bard, you can get access to the Cure Critical Wands from the Guild Vendor really easily, and so once I hit level 7, I started using those, and those heal for about 75 a throw, thanks to my one and scroll mastery, and that's more than enough, uh, and way more than I would actually heal, plus it doesn't cost any mana, it just costs gold, but that's what the Haggle is for, the Haggle fixes that gold problem. A lot of just generally defensive spells, I started with Sonic Blast as my first first level spell, and then I kind of went up from there, uh, going with Expeditious Retreat and then Cure. Uh, my last one happened to be a Merfolk's Blessing, and I'll probably swap out Cure for something like Feather Falling, just another good utility spell. I'm focusing on taking a lot of the buff spells, so we've got Good Hope, Rage, Haste, Blur, stuff I can put on my allies as well as myself, which is nice. Now, as far as the actual enhancements go on this character, this character is focusing a lot on the Typhling Scoundrel, uh tree, but not right away. You want to go into Spellstringer first, for two main reasons. Reason number one, the Shout Spell-like ability is how you basically play the character. This does a ton of damage, hitting monsters for about 180 right now, and if I crit them, upwards of 400 damage, because I've got a little bit of extra stats there, and that's really good. Hitting monsters really, really hard, very, very potent, so I would highly recommend getting uh, Shout as soon as possible. And then I continued to push into this tree to pick up Inspirating Melody, Inspiration Melody, Sustaining Song, as well as uh, Inspiration Melody Song of Arcane Might and the Inspiration Melody Frolic. And the reason is, when you use the ability Inspire as a bard, you basically play a song that then allows you to buff up your allies. Now, when you first get it, it only adds plus four to all skills. Now, plus four to all skills is really good, but the Spellsinger buffs up your inspiration. So you can get Spell Song Trance, which reduces the cost of people's uh, so spells, as well as increasing their DCs, increasing your own DCs, which is nice. Getting extra plus one cash level, which means your spells are doing more damage. And the best one, Sustaining Song, giving you a fast healing effect. This scales off of your healing spell power, and it's your spell power at the time. So it's your positive spell power at the time of casting. So this is really great because it means that if you want to buff people up with a really powerful Sustaining Song, when you get into epics, you can use things like Wellspring of Power or Action Boosts, other weird stuff, to get a ton of healing spell power put the buffs on everybody, and then swap all of that stuff off. So if you really wanted to go ahead and do that, you could. So let's just say you don't want to use the Silver Thread Belt in your build, you can just swap the Silver Thread Belt on, play the Sustaining Song, and then take it off and still be good. As well, the Frolic effect here gives everyone freedom of movement, which is nice because this cannot be dispelled by Beholders or anything, because it is in fact music, which is really nice. After I got my 27 points spent in this tree, I then moved into the War Chanter tree. The Typhling Scoundrel stuff is very good, um, but War Chanter is a little bit more important. I want to get 11 points right away, because that's going to give you um, this effect right here, which is Song of Heroism, which is plus two to attack, saving throws, and immunity to fear. Uh, the additional saving throws is really, really nice, because with this character, you're able to get Greater Heroism, Song of Heroism here, which stacks because it's a music bonus, and getting the uh, Song of Heroics, uh, which is a bard song you get at level 15, which adds plus 4 to all saves, effectively buffing everybody's saves by 10. So when you look at my character's saving throws, 9, 13, 10, not that great. But 19, 23, and 20? That's actually pretty good. And it's very useful for a character like this. And that affects all of your allies as well, making them much more defensive. You can also pick up some just good defensive stuff out of the War Chanter tree, like the extra armor class and physical resistance rating. Another nice thing, too, is that you get some extra life from taking these things. Uh, this character is going to finish off with grabbing 21 points in this tree for Fighting Spirit, which gives your Inspire Courage plus one damage, blah, blah, blah. But most importantly, Inspire Greatness now uses your Charisma score for its temporary HP and is doubled in Epics. Since this character is a Spellcaster, Charisma is going to be my highest stat, which means I'll be giving a lot of temporary hit points to my allies just by standing next to them. Now, in the Typhling Scoundrel tree, I mentioned this uh, earlier, but the Ash Imprisonment effect here, your Fiendish Arpeggio attempts to turn your target to stone, or is target to burning ash, my, my bad. It's similar to flesh to stone, however, it's better because it affects anything that your Fascinate can affect. And your Fascinate can affect a lot of things. And that's where the Spell Singer really comes in. Uh, music of the Sewers means you'll be able to hit stuff like oozes, which is really cool. Music of the Dead means you can start hitting Undead with that effect. Music of the Makers means you can hit Constructs with that effect. And that's really good. And pretty much every monster in the game is now vulnerable 
to your Ash Imprisonment. It's also important to note that Music of the Dead and Music of the Makers also allows the uh, sustaining song to t fast heal both undead players and Warforged players. Undead and Warforged are actually unaffected by sustaining song unless you have these enhancements here. And uh, this one makes them repair, except it uses your reconstruction spell power, which you might not have any. And the Music of the Dead uses your negative energy spell power if you happen to have any. So that's kind of neat. It also makes us you hand out some more healing amp to your allies, which is pretty cool. Overall, this character has been pretty fun, and I've had a good time playing with it. I mean, my gear is not too amazing. I have some just some basic stuff. I did happen to get very, very luckily, I had someone give this to me, a Resonance of Sonic Lore Club, which is nice for my spell power, as well as I have an offhand of Devoted of Healing Lore, so my character's got a lot of additional spell power. Also carrying around the Runic Trinket. This is a fantastic item to get out of the Sharn Syndicate, and I highly recommend you pick one up if you have the ability to farm one out, because it's Spell Focus Mastery, Wizardry, and then Insightful Potency just gives you a lot of extra spell power. And then the rest of my items are mostly garbage. You know, plus four con, uh, dex five. This one from Three Barrel Cove. You know, nothing really crazy here. Just some basic stuff. Uh, I don't actually have any of the item sets from, um, what do you call it, the Red Fens? Because I just don't like those quests and I feel they're really tedious to farm out. So I'm not personally farming them, but uh, it is an option. And then other than that, of course, things that you carry in your inventory... It's Hardcore League, guys, so you got to make sure you have lots of additional consumables and effects. So, for this character, I've got Resist 20 potions all along the side of all the different elements, because my character, unfortunately, doesn't cast the spell Resist Energy, which is important. I've also got the uh, Lesser Restoration potions chilling right here in case something comes up. I should have Remove Curse and Disease potions. That's probably the next thing we do buy once I turn off this video. Uh, False Life ones and Aid ones. These might not seem really great, but right now I'm at 191 with temporary hit points. If I actually slap on both of these, my character is actually able to squeak up to 215. And that extra temporary hit points, maybe if you have to run through a trap because you don't have a trap guy for a quest, it just helps out to cast outside of combat. And then, of course, the actual Cure Critical Wands. When I press Cure Critical, uh, you can't see the number because I was covering it, but I'm able to hurt, heal myself for 58, which if I actually cast a spell on myself, it's about the same amount, except this only costs money instead of actual spell points. There's something I forgot to mention, was that the Typhling Scoundrels actually play songs with their spell casting. So when you cast a spell, instead of it actually, like, making a whooshy sound of your character having words, you whip out the fiddle and... It also means when you use your Bardic Inspiration, you also do the fiddle. Which is pretty cool. Um, so, all in all, I think the Typhling Scoundrels fun, it's flavorful. Some people find the fiddle really annoying, but I think it's really cool, and I love hearing it every single time I play the character. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today, so uh, check it out. I'm going to be giving you updates. If this character dies, this character dies, and I'll just be posting another video about the next thing that I'm going to be playing. But uh, as I said, uh, from now on, whatever I'm doing on Hardcore, I'm just going to post the video, because sometimes you might learn about it, and I think some people can get a few tips and tricks. You might see something that seems a little bit more fun that you might not have expected to be as fun as it is. Anyway, that's all I got, so... Uh, you know, have a good day. Stay safe. This is uh, a spooky time for a lot of people because the whole coronavirus thing is going on. So if I can say one thing, it's that make sure that you are checking in on your loved ones and stuff. People that, you know, are, are you know, potentially alone or people you haven't talked to in a while. Just reach out, send a text or something and be like, hey, how are you doing? Is everything okay? Do you need any help with anything? Especially if you are in this position where, you know, Everything's going good for you, so just reach out and stuff. Also, consider going out and donating blood. Um, if you're feeling healthy and good, and you're like me, and you have O-negative blood type, I went out and donated blood last week, and uh, it's important because, you know, this is going to be something that will come up in the future. So think about that ahead of time. Anyway, that's all I got. Uh, stay safe. Play DDO. Just stay inside and play DDO, guys, and everything's going to be just fine, and this will pass over. But that's all I got. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.